we wanted to begin uh, with your story of how you came to sue for the documents uh, that have now resulted in this treasure trove of 65,000 emails. How, what motivated you and how did that come about? I have been involved in trying to make the Public Utilities Commission more open for some time. When San Bruno uh, explosion happened, the attorneys up there had tried to get documents and uh, brought a lawsuit when the Public Utilities Commission would not give the records, even though the Public Records Act required them to. Separately, down here in San Diego in Southern California, I was working on matters relating to San Onofre nuclear plants, and I was trying to stop a meeting that was happening behind closed doors in San Diego. I had to file a suit in order to try to prevent violations of California open meeting law. Through that activity, the San Bruno lawyers and I corresponded because it seems as though the Public Utility Commission was acting behind closed doors, either by up there not giving documents or in Southern California, closing the doors to its meeting. So they, they seem to operate in this unprecedented uh, way of secrecy. And that's how I got uh, first involved. We then, the San Bruno emails, the 65,000 emails were finally released after they brought suit. Once those came out and I saw how pervasive the uh, relationship was of the utility with the commissioners, I thought that can't just be going on in Northern California. It must be going on in Southern California. So I did a Public Records Act request requesting all communications with PUC, President and Commissioner PV, as well as the others assigned to the San Onofre case and Southern California Edison. That's how that started. And when was that? The, the request for emails for the Southern California Edison uh, group was in September 2014. I had to write emails, call, threaten to sue, and I was preparing a lawsuit when they finally released the first wave of emails, and they were pretty damning. That did not happen until... Uh, like December, January. And the um, the latest revelation um, it happened with the raid of uh, PV's home. Can you talk about that? Yes. We, you know, uh, me and my uh, law partner, Mike Aguirre, were very bothered by the secrecy that was going on. Once we realized that uh, they had raided PV's home, we were able to obtain the search warrant that uh, disclosed what was taken. One of the things was something that said RSG notes on Bristol Hotel stationery. Okay, RSG meant to us replacement steam generators. That is the, the single issue at San Onofre. It was those replacement steam generators that were supposed to last decades and decades, but lasted less than two. That is what is at stake at San Onofre, what shut down the nuclear power plant, and what's resulted in a bogus contrived settlement that was orchestrated, we just found out, by uh, President Peavy to the tune of uh, over $3, million, $3 billion. Would you call that a smoking gun? Well, yes, it's a smoking gun in that there was no. So it was interesting. The 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 uh, subpoena or the warrant rather said RSG notes on Bristol Hotel stationery. So which Bristol Hotel? There's one in Paris, and I know from emails that we uh, had requested and had produced by the commission that there were meetings with Southern Cal Edison and uh, PV in Paris, so, but it seems to be at a different hotel. We thought maybe Bristol Hotel in San Francisco, 
but it was actually what happened once the newspaper reported about this RSG notes that were part of the subject of the search warrant. On Monday, Southern California Edison filed what they called a late filed notice of ex parte communication. That means communications with, without the other side present. They filed this late notice more or about two years after the meeting. And it's supposed to be filed within three days of such a meeting. Why do you... So, Go ahead. That is a smoking gun. Uh-huh. And so um, can you describe what the um, meeting was about? Well, the only description we can give is the description that was provided by Southern California Edison. What they, what they write is that, and I'm quoting, the meeting was initiated by Mr. Peavy, who had requested an update on the status of SPE's efforts to restart San Onofre generating station, nuclear generating station. Now, mind you, this was, the meeting was on March 26, 2013. It was Edison's executive vice president of external relations, Stephen Pickett, and he met with President Peavy at the Bristol Hotel in Warsaw, Poland. Okay. The meeting lasted, according to Edison, two years later, 30 minutes, and it states that Mr. Pickett provided an update, but in the course of the meeting, Mr. Peavy initiated a communication on a framework for possible resolution of the order instituting investigation that he would consider acceptable, but would nonetheless require agreement by at least some of the parties in presentation uh, by the commission. Okay, so it says Mr. Pickett, this is the executive vice president of Edison, took notes during the meeting, which PV kept. So the meeting, thousands and thousands of miles away in a foreign country, in a five-star hotel to work out some deal as to what Edison is going to uh, do to resolve this complete failure of the plant and how it's going to affect ratepayers. Let's put that in context. This was March 2013. The order instituting investigation was started in 2012. The parties, the public and various uh, groups of interest that are, you know, uh, consumer groups and nuclear related groups are parties to this proceeding. They were not in Warsaw when this meeting occurred and when this proposed settlement was, was constructed. So here they are going along with the facade of due process proceeding when in fact a deal looks like it might have already have been struck and it's just a charade of a proceeding until ultimately the settlement is, uh, you know, worked out exactly as, as probably they did back two years ago. And in fact, you mention uh, the strategy of of pause and delay. And uh, do you want to speak about that? Sure. What we found when we went through the emails, both for Pacific Gas and Electric, as well as down uh, in the southern part of California with the Edison and PEV and the staff emails, what we found is that when the utilities would ask for things to be delayed, they would be granted. So uh, up in, uh, again, in, with the San Bruno, that um, there was delays, and they seemed to be at the request of the utility. The emails that we got showed the same thing happened here. So the San Onofre, the nuclear plant, the proceedings were supposed to be to figure out whether it was reasonable to install the generators. You know, what are what are the causes of this failure and who should bear those burdens? Was it Southern California Edison who knowingly put in these generators? Or knowing there was going to be problems, 
or recklessly disregarded all the signs that these tremendous generators they put in that were bigger than any others, had more tubes than any others built, did they know that they were likely to fail but took a chance anyway because they knew they had the PUC in their pocket? Because who would pay for it at the end? Shareholders or the ratepayers? And there's serious questions that arise because the delays and the way the proceedings were structured were so segregated where they didn't decide whether it was, it's reasonable to put them in and now charge the customers. The issue they put first is how much should we charge the customers? I mean, it's, it's like getting a bill and then figuring out whether you uh, are even have to pay it, whether you even receive the service. It, it is illogical. And based on uh, what we're seeing as far as these back channel emails and now with the government going into PD's kitchen and home office and getting what seems to be very damning documents, uh, it seems like it's more than illogical, it's criminal. And you mentioned that PV kept the notes from this meeting in in uh, Poland, and that they were found. And then I've read that they were found on his kitchen table at the raid. What what do you make of that? Why would he keep them, and why was he looking at? Them? Well, you know, you asked why would he keep those. Some documents were on his kitchen table. Some were in his home office. I mean, this is the equivalent of writing notes, you know, on a, on a on a bar napkin. That's how casually they are working out some deal that affects 17 million ratepayers. So it begs the question: Why did he keep those notes? You know, we can only speculate, but maybe he had Southern California Edison write them, and he kept them in case he might need them someday. You know, we can only speculate, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, wonder what. Mr. Peavy and the CPUC are involved in other proceedings and other issue areas. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking about smart meter opt out and uh, also uh, the the future of the Diablo Canyon nuclear plant. Uh, do you what evidence is there that this pattern of behavior of back channel communications and uh, bar napkin agreements uh, is their standard operating procedure? Well, there's been a plethora of emails from PV, who is now gone, that show uh, that he was very accessible to the higher echelon of the utility, to the executive of the utility. They exchanged everything from uh, sports tickets to a meeting in private clubs, like the California Club in uh, Los Angeles, a very elite private club. So what does that mean for Diablo and smart meters? I think it calls into question the integrity of the entire PUC. Because right now, even in the face of, of what's coming out with the raid on TV's house with these emails, there has not been any denouncement of this by the new president of the Public Utility Commission, and there's been no action by the governor to look into this any further and, and take action. So I think until we not just hear words, but see action from the top down, that the uh, change is, is coming and coming immediately. I think that, uh, you know, there's real issues for every issue before the Public Utility Commission. I mean, for San Onofre, they have a settlement agreement that was approved by the commission. Uh, on behalf of our clients, we filed a petition for rehearing. And we're hopeful that the Public Utility Commission will use this as an opportunity to say, you know what? We need to undo the settlement and rehear it and start from scratch because the process was so tainted, or at least has the look of impropriety. So that should start new. And I think that for Diablo, and, and if there's evidence of this collusion, that needs to happen there as well. So um, if they, uh, now how does your uh, class action lawsuit relate to your application for rehearing? Well, it's interesting. 
when the decision uh, was uh, about to, when we were waiting on a decision, but there was already um, a recommendation that the proceedings were going on, we filed the lawsuit on behalf of the uh, the taxpayers, which are the utility rate payers, because the Public Utilities Commission never had hearings to determine whether the uh, facility was reasonable and useful. Okay, so here the public is being asked to pay something where there's been no determination that the facility has been useful and reasonable. Okay, that is taking without just compensation under the Fifth Amendment. We've asked for there to be hearing, but you know, right now there is a settlement that has gone through and uh, there's been no decision to rehear it or to, you know, uh, to overturn it. So until then, um, you know, we have a valid cause of action. Well, in the case of the smart meters, they, uh, we have been charged, uh, those of, of us who do not choose to have a smart meter because of health reasons or, for, or other reasons, um, are being charged to not have something. Uh, we find that this is somewhat like being charged for a, a, a non-existent electrical source. <laughs> So, Jim, do you want to ask another question? Well, we're just about to uh, have tomorrow night a celebratory dinner uh, for Mr. Peavy, and I'm wondering what perspective you have on that. He's going; His career is going to be celebrated, according to the newspaper accounts, by his colleagues, by uh, utility people, and also mm -hmm. by environmentalists. Well... I think it's shameful that he would appear and uh, the people who go to that to celebrate him, I think that it's really shameful in the light of how he has abused the trust and confidence that the people of California has put in him. The Public Utility Commission is one of the few state agencies that actually has the power to, in essence, tax its citizens. They set the rates for what we all must pay, just like the smart meters or, you know, what we pay for our electric rates. And at the helm of that ship was President Peavy for a very long time. And now we see through hard evidence, his cozy relationship, his the delay of proceeding for cronies, we see the uh, his house his home being searched and uh, notes taken, his, his laptops, his smartphone. I mean, that, the fact that that is the backdrop of this lavish $250 uh, a plate dinner it is obscene. And I think that uh, really anyone who is thinking of going should take a look in the mirror and decide whether that's the applicant to do or the right thing to do. Is that sending the right message? So what's next? Uh, in the best of all possible worlds, uh, what would happen now, and what are the, your next moves? Well, in the best of, of all possible worlds, a number of things would happen. First, there would be legislation to change the structure of the PUC. They would, uh, I think, last year, Senator, State Senator Hill had proposed a bill that went to change the public utility code to allow for open meetings and allow for the Public Records Act request to be uh, heard in superior court, the trial courts, where you can take evidence instead of the appellate court. And I think getting legislation passed to make uh, the proceedings in the commission more open is vital. I think that any proceedings that have taken place during the reign of PV, I think there needs to be a review, a careful review, to see if those proceedings were tainted. We certainly know they were with PG&E and San Bruno, and that's you know people had to, people died there. I mean that that's what it took to shed some light on this uh, you know dark cavern that the PUC operates um, with Southern California Edison and San Onofre. 
I think that this is a perfect opportunity now, while the decision, while there's a petition for rehearing, to do the right thing and throw out the prior decision and start from scratch. But there needs to be a complete overhaul because the policy reasons behind protecting the citizens and, and with this public utility commission, it's turned into the private utility commission. And it needs to get back to serving the interests of the public. So do you think um, Michael Picker is um, up to this challenge? You know, I am hopeful that Michael Picker uses this opportunity to make some serious changes and not for them. What I've heard from the new president or the governor, again, is any kind of sharp criticism and, uh, you know, announcement of the practices that have occurred there. There's been a uh, relative conspicuous silence. Mm -hmm. That's bothersome. Any final thoughts? Well, for final thoughts, what I would say is, you know, I would hope that through, uh, you know, the media and, and activism and that people, you know, everyday people who pay their elected bills, that they first know what the Public Utility Commission does and how it works, get some basic understanding that that's who sets our rates, and then have an intolerance for anything short of public service when it comes to watching over how those rates are set. The more the public gets involved and demands of their legislators, demands of their governor, that uh, the proceedings be uh, proper and represent their interests, the more change is likely to happen. So, you know, I, I'm hopeful that this is a, uh, a critical moment right now and that there will be change. Well, thank you so much, Mia. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thanks. All power to your thank work. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll be in touch. Okay. Okay. okay thanks so much. Thank Bye -bye. you.